Hey ladies and gents, Tony in the studio talking about one of the most common questions or interests that I get from the interwebs and that is about a shot list. I work from a shot list on every single shoot, whether it's architecture or food or whatever it is that I might be shooting. And that shot list is the child of a lot of different things. Uh, first of all, we go out on a scout uh, for the project. That may be an architecture scout, that may be uh, looking at dummy plates of food, uh, whatever it is, whatever the genre is that you're working with, doing some sort of a scout or a prelim visualization of the project is always step one. From that, we can build a rough shot list or wish list is what I like to call it, with the client. They can tell us all the different angles that they want or all the different food shots that they want or all the different product angles that they want. We can take all that information along with additional notes and put that into uh, what we call our, our first draft of a shot list. And then we send that off to the client to review with the rest of their office and their creative teams. Once they've had a chance to look through that information, then they can narrow it down, whittle down that shot list and try to make things fit within their budget if they are working with a smaller budget um, that won't fit their entire wish list or dream list. Uh, or they can add shots, take away shots, change shots, whatever. Let's jump into the computer and I'll show you exactly how I put this thing together and you'll see kind of what our process is and how this all unfolds. All right, so we're on the computer and the app that I use to put all this stuff together is Dropbox Paper. Uh, Dropbox Paper is a, mm, it's a fairly new offering from Dropbox. I guess it's been around for a couple of years, but it basically gives you essentially kind of like a scrapbook, uh, but you can create projects in there. As you can see, I'm logged in through my regular Dropbox account. And then inside of that, there's a tab over here that says paper. And just about everybody has Dropbox, which is a good thing. Um, so this should be included with your Dropbox account. And then here's a few of the projects that I have in here right now. Uh, let's use this Northern Quest as an example. We open this up and you can see we have table of contents. We can jump to certain parts of the um, project right here uh, on the left side. And as we scroll through this, um, you'll see the table of contents kind of highlights depending on where we are in our particular uh, shot list that we've put together. Uh, we have it broken down into a few different sections. First of all, of course, we have a title. We put in a general description of what the project is going to be. Then we go through a shot list, and this is the images that the client selects. So we put them all out here, shot one, shot two, shot three, et cetera. And we try to put in, you know, what a description of that shot is and then whatever other pertinent information there may be, such as the perspective or where we're looking or what angle that we're standing and facing or whatever the case is, if it's at night, if it's uh, daytime, if it's in the snow, what, whatever the case is, we try to put as much descriptive information in here as we possibly can for our shot list. After that, uh, we go in to add the scout photos. Now these scout photos are numbered as you see shot one, shot two, and those correspond with the shot list that's in text up here at the top. So shot one is exterior of the screens, Twilight Hero. Well, here's an exterior of the screens, Twilight Hero. Now this is shot with an iPhone. We always do our scouts with an iPhone. The color is amazing. The focal length is pretty close to a 24 millimeter that we would get out of uh, you know any standard DSLR these days. And so it's a good scout focal length for us. It, and it got such dynamic range. It's easy for us to kind of get everything in a single shot without having to do any post-production on our scout images. So anyway, all of these get numbered and they correspond to that previous text shot list. Finally, we come down to a map and on the map um, can be an aerial, this can be a architecture plans or whatever if you're doing interiors. Um, you may have multiple maps uh, if you have some exteriors you're doing combined with some interiors that you're doing. Um, we'll, we'll use maps. Um, if you're doing a food shoot or a product shoot, you may not have maps. Um, maybe you have some other supporting documentation that goes in here. But again, what's most important here is that they all correspond with one another. So this uh, particular map has numbers where each of these shots are going to be taking place so that the client can see, oh, okay, so for shot uh, nine, he's standing over here by the fountain shooting 
this direction. Um, and so you can make these as detailed as you want, but I found that this is pretty sufficient for most of the work that we're doing. From here, what I'll do is I'll send this off to the client. You can see I have several people invited here. So I can invite the client and whoever else may be involved in the project and they can leave me comments. You'll see that there's little comment tabs over here and when they get into this, they can sit and comment on each of these. They can comment on each photo and say, we like this, but we'd like to see um, more view to the left or you know, we love this shot, but we'd like to see it at twilight instead. They can leave whatever kind of comments that they want and that feedback is what we use to build the final shot list. The final shot list will essentially look exactly like our main shot list, but we'll one line through some of these things. So if they've scratched shot eight, then we'll just simply do a strike through and shot eight is scratched. And that way we know that that was originally a shot that they requested, but they've scratched it from the shot list. Um, and so that we can just kind of keep track of everything and have a timeline of how things unfolded to get to our final shot list. Once we get to that final shot list, we print it out as a PDF and we take that with us on location. That final shot list is what we will actually use uh, when we get out on location or on the job to shoot from. One of the other important details to the shoot is the time of day you're going to be photographing, especially when shooting architecture. We kind of have some help with that through the use of technology these days, uh, specifically an app called Sunseeker. Now there's a lot of different apps out there that track the sun. I like Sunseeker. Uh, I think it's, I don't know, less than 10 bucks in the app store. And it basically shows you uh, on a map, a Google Maps overlay, what direction the sun is going to be heading uh, at any given time of day. So you can find your exact location of the building or structure that you're going to be photographing. And then it will show you at 7 a.m., 8 a.m., 9 a.m., 10 a.m., whatever, all the way through the day where the sun is going to be in relation to that building so that you can get an idea of what time to plan your shots. Uh, and that helps you build a, a much better shot list. A lot of times that can help you decide if you're going to need more than one day to shoot a project. If you have to get multiple shots while the sun is in a certain position, uh, it's impossible to be in more than one place at a time. So you're probably going to have to make it a multi-day shoot unless you have more than one camera set up or more than one shooter. But using the Sunseeker app is a huge help for that. There's other apps out there that can help you do very similar things, sun up, time, sundown time, all of these things uh, are helpful in planning out your shot list. And it should all be stuff that's annotated in your shot list. I didn't go that specific on this particular one, but sometimes I do, especially when we get into the winter months when our days are short. That just helps our client understand why we may need more than one day to shoot a particular project. When the sun comes up at 7 a.m. and goes down at 4 p.m., that doesn't leave us a very long shoot day. So when I'm on location with an architect or a client or they're here in the studio and we're putting together these shot lists, um, this is when, you know, usually I'm writing things down in the notebook or I'm telling my assistant what to write into a notebook. Hey, I want to look at the uh, northeast corner of the building. It's going to be a daytime shot. Uh, we're looking at a um, probably a 17 millimeter lens. Uh, we want to have people in the foreground. We need to make sure that we're bagging all the meters so that uh, nobody can park in front of this shot, whatever. Those are the kind of notes that are going into our notebook. At the same time, myself or the assistant is also going to be taking photos with our iPhone so that we have something to reference with those notes. And then, uh, of course, we'll make a spot on the plat map or the floor plan or whatever where that shot is taking place so that we can put all that together as you saw uh, in Dropbox paper. I go into all of this, including a full scout uh, and a walkthrough with an architect on a project in my architecture tutorial over at ProEDU. I'll put a link in the description down below so you can check that out. You want to see me on an actual scout for a project and talking with an architect, putting together a shot list. Check it out. Uh, they usually have a good sale on that thing. You can get it uh, for just a few bucks. Um, tons of information packed and uh, I think it's a, like a 10 hour tutorial. So check it out. Okay, so once we've put all that together, the client has made their comments, they've done all the one lines, we've scratched shots, added shots, whatever. We, we build everything cumulative in a single shot list so that we can see all the changes that are made. That's the nice thing about doing it digitally. If they want to scratch a shot, we can simply strike through, that shot's gone, and then um, we still have a record that it was there at one time, so later the client can't go, well, what happened to that one shot of the front of the building? Well, you scratched it, here it is. It was on our original shot list. So uh, you always want to be able to document this stuff. 
Once we have that final shot list, that's what we work from. That is our shot list for the day. That's how we're pricing everything. That's what our budget is built off of. If anything changes, uh, that's gonna affect the price potentially. So if they wanna add shots to the shot list, then we have to make sure, A, there's enough time in a day to do that and find out if it's gonna cost anything extra. At the very least, there's gonna be extra post-production involved. So anybody who is not working from a defined shot list like this is asking for trouble some point in their career. Uh, I've done it, it's happened to me. Things get changed around, clients' expectations are different uh, than what your expectations of a shoot were. And I found that flushing out the shot list this way, letting the client own it to say, you know, where they are the ones that actually went through and, and discussed it with their team and have made comments and have given feedback and come up with this final revision, uh, that just makes it so that everything runs much smoother. You have as much description in there as you possibly need, so there's no ambiguity when you get on set and start to shoot these things. Now, you don't have to use uh, Dropbox paper. You could do it with a, with a Word document. You could do it with anything. It doesn't even have to be electronic, um, but some sort of record of exactly what's supposed to be shot along with scout images, or if you're gonna be doing, let's say a product shoot, you can use your iPhone and get a rough angle um, of the shot. Or if there's supposed to be some sort of a grouping of cosmetics, for example, you can take uh, a group shot showing all the products that are supposed to be in that group shot. That way later, your client can come back to you and go, oh, product XYZ was also supposed to be in the shot. Well, not according to the scout shot that I did or the preliminary shot that I did and I put into our shot list, which you approved. So if they wanna do another shot that adds a different product into the group or whatever, that's gonna change the cost. So this is a business and you gotta make sure that you're covering your rear. It's not to say that clients are out to deceive you. It's just that miscommunications happen and when you have a lot of hands in a project, you have marketing directors and creative directors and the photographer and the photographer's assistant and whoever else, maybe the marketing agency of some sort, whatever, things can get really convoluted very quickly. And so by having a well-defined shot list, you'll find that things are gonna go much smoother. If you haven't listened to the podcast, be sure to check out The Pixel Punishers. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. If you like this video, give it a little thumbs up. If you didn't, double tap that dislike button. And uh, if you're so inclined, give us a follow on Instagram. Questions, comments, I'm out. Peace.